Hi, uh, welcome to a quick um, overview of social class inequality. Um, so looking at social class inequality, we can say it can be defined using two measures. So social class um, refers to a group which, um, uh, groups which are divided in terms of material resources, um, but it can be defined in two ways. So generally we tend to think of economic material resources like money. Um, and social class implies a fixed group, so it suggests the idea that people can't change their status. In today's um, academic world, we use the concept of socio-economic status, or SES, socio-economic status, to look at the two main measures of class. So the two main measures of class are socio and economic status. So status is your social position, how important you're considered compared to others. Socio-economic status is the two ways in which a class can be, can be categorised or measured uh, to, to define your status. So socio relates to the norms and values and lifestyle of a group. Okay, so the socio part of the socio-economic status refers to the norms and values and lifestyle of a social group. So, for example, we can look at norms and values in terms of food, language, dress code, um, we can look at sex roles in the family. Okay, so those are aspects of norms and values and lifestyle. They might affect how important we think it is to have uh, women staying in the home, how important we think traditional families and family life is, how important we think healthy food is as opposed to uh, tasty food. Um, how important we think um, language is in terms of proper speech. Um, how important we think work is as a means to an end or in terms of elevating yourself and reaching a higher status through a career. So there are different attitudes which are part of the norms and values and lifestyle of the group as part of how you define social class. So social class in this sense often can be seen as sub subjective measure. It's, it's less objective and more subjective because it's seen as based on opinion and beliefs about what are the ways in which we um, define someone's lifestyle, how you know, food, taste, dress, appearance, uh, speech, how we define those different um, elements as affecting class. So that can be a subjective measure because it provides a measure based on the opinion of the, those researched. So it's based on your self-defined social class. So you might say, I'm middle class because I believe in going vegan, vegan food, organic food, and I really value uh, my career. And then you have the other side of social class, the other measure of class, a different measure of class, which is the economic measure of class. The economic measure of class includes income and wealth. So it includes income which is related to occupation. Income and occupation are related to your position in the labour market. So your income, your occupation, position in the labour market are related to the economy. The types of work available, whether it's routine non-manual work, or whether it's non-routine non-manual work with more responsibility, with greater rewards in terms of income and other resources and job perks. Um, wealth, inherited property, um, wealth, inherited resources, inherited at birth. That could be part of what we call the economic measure of class. The economic measure of class um, is, is the main measure used by the government to measure social class and they use an occupational measure. So they base your social class on your occupation. So the way in which we measure social class, the government, is an occupational measure, and it's called the NSSEC measure. So that is the National Statistical Socio-Economic Classification Index. National Statistical Socio-Economic Classification Index. And that index relates to eight categories of people or occupations. Eight categories of occupations from chief executive officers to um, the routine manual workers, and even an underclass, which is class 8, long-term unemployed. So you've got two measures, 
that is seen as objective. It's, it's about external factors and not internal factors. So it's about what people think generally in society about those economic positions rather than culture and lifestyle.